Um, thank you for joining me um, this afternoon for this talk um, entitled uh, Cloud Native Thread Modeling and uh, uh, Adversary Emulation, um, Technical and Tools. My name is uh, Rafi Karabi. Uh, I've been in the IT world for almost 15 years, and I've been with SysDig for um, three and, year and a half right now, uh, working mainly with the customer in Europe and Middle East on Cloud Native Security Advocacy and moving them securely to the cloud. Um, before that, I've been working on consulting go to cloud programs, mainly with consulting companies like Deloitte and NTT Data. So there is my LinkedIn profile, uh, my Twitter, please, please feel free to, uh, to, to reach me. So uh, what we'll be talking about today, we start by talking about uh, the cloud native application building blocks, how it's different from the legacy uh, world, uh, then we'll delve into the multitude of uh, cloud attack surface and the different challenges that it comes with. Um, then we'll uh, deep into the thread modeling, uh, the different techniques that we use for the thread modeling, following by the adversary uh, emulation for cloud native application. And finally, we'll finish by listing the tool that will help you uh, to do uh, this stuff, plus uh, takeaways. So let's start. Um, on open time, uh, it was like quite simple uh, to protect monolithic application. They are deployed in a kind of VM or physical services. And what you need to do is just putting a kind of firewall or EDN in front of it to detect any intrusion. But this is a little bit different or totally different when it comes uh, to the cloud. First, because the cloud services are public. They are exposed to the outside world. You have different services. They are living together um, in your cloud account, or your cloud project organization, and you need to define the right control access for each team or each service. Um, uh, also, um, this, this complexity of multiple services talking uh, together uh, generate a lot uh, of logs, and it will be really hard to detect a new, um, unusual activity. Um, let's see how cloud native application is built. So we have the cloud infrastructure. Then we have a, the workload that can be containers, serverless, maybe some workloads coming from on-prem, just shift and lift. And all this stuff is working on top of Kubernetes, um, whatever is, is managed by your teams, or you're taking one managed service from the cloud provider or container as a service. And we have a bunch of um, let's say, um, satellite services that you need for um, your application, mainly everything around identity and access, uh, network like load balancing and so on, management services like logging and monitoring, and finally, everything around data like databases and object and uh, um, storage. So uh, this is bring uh, like different layers. So we can see in the middle you have your code. This is your business application that is delivered. Then you get this layer of abstraction uh, or separation that is the container. Then another layer, uh, which is Kubernetes. We can imagine that you are putting um, your, uh, you, you are deploying your, your application in specific namespace. So it gives you another layer of abstraction. And finally, we have the cloud provider. So we, ca we have these four C uh, layers. And the challenge is that is coming uh, uh, with the challenge that you have first dynamic surface attack for the simple reason that uh, your, your developer team or your services team will need to go back to like a kind of central or enterprise architecture and ask for modification. They have a panel of services that are provided on the cloud and they can't pick and change the architecture depending on the business requirements. The second thing that those uh, bad actors that are trying to get into your environment and steal, for example, some, some sensitive documentation, they are using the same tool. So if you are using Terraform to accelerate your cloud deployment, they may use Terraform to deploy any, any malicious stuff. So they are using the same tool, and they are moving with the same speed as you, which is not the same in legacy world. Distributed and microservice, distributed system and microservice, they bring a lot of intercommunication that will um, bring more and more uh, calls generated. And by the way, it will be really hard to detect any unusual activity, plus the lack of visibility when it comes like to hundreds of microservices talking together. 
And finally, your security team need to follow the same step as you, which is a little bit challenging in enterprise world. So uh, before going into threat modeling and adversary emulation, uh, I'd like to mention this, this phrase from John Lambert, who is from Microsoft security team. Um, and I like this phrase because it's describing the way that attacker um, think and the way that defender thinks. So, what he's saying, he's saying defenders think in lists. So usually you have a list of compliance or you have a list of stuff that you need to report to your management or you need to report to the authority because you have some regulation to comply with. But attacker, I think they are thinking totally different. They're trying to move from one step to another until they get access to your system and get what they want to get. So this is really important to keep in mind that you don't have to think about lists and just the kind of checklists to say, hey, I'm compliant. But you need to think in a way how the attacker going in order to be able to, uh, to protect your environment and your enterprise. Uh, so let's go with a couple of definitions for the guys that are not coming uh, from security background. Thread modeling is the exercise uh, to identify the different um, building blocks of your system, then identifying the threat and the mitigation for this potential threat. Um, and it's, a, it's always concerning valuable assets. Let's say if you have, I would say, uh, images that you are using in your public um, website and they are exposed in a three bucket, you don't never mind if someone access and get them. So it's always depending if the data is valuable or not, or the asset is valuable or not. The adversary emulation on the other side is the exercise to use the same um, uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures um, coming with uh, those bad actors to mimic these tactics and be able to see and to test your system resiliency against that. So here we are, we are taking the choose of uh, a bad actor and trying to mimic the same activities and make sure that our system is resilient against those attacks. Um, we have different uh, methodology for thread modeling or different techniques. Uh, the most known is Stride from Microsoft. They've been developed by Microsoft, and here we split the thread in six categories. We have also um, known other known methodology or techniques like attack tree, when we are uh, dispatching the system in a kind of root and different leaves and children. And when everything is, 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 is true with the, the different children, we can identify an attack that is possible. And finally, uh, data flow, which is a kind of um, um, graphical representation of the, the user or the end user or any other user on the system, and it can define the different interaction and between the different blocks and can spot the um, um, like risky, uh, risky uh, configuration. So the pillars uh, are the system architecture. You need to make sure that you're defining your system architecture, and you need uh, to make sure that you have a bunch of uh, um, actor identified either like the people that are working on the system or the people that are on the other side, the bad actors, then listing the different threads depending on uh, the interaction of the system, and finally uh, defining mitigation. Um, the stride approach is coming with six categories, as I mentioned, uh, spoofing, um, tempering, repudiation, information disclosure, those and elevation of privilege. So, and how it's going, um, let's say that we have this example of digital bank. We define the different blocks, then we define the different interaction uh, between these blocks, and finally, we define a kind of trust boundary when those services or these blocks can, can talk and communicate together to lately identify any weak point and uh, potential threat. Um, yes. So um, let's define a little bit the person that I've been talking about. The business owner, he needs to balance between the business requirement and um, the security requirement. The application developer, he helping identifying the architecture of the application and also implementing the mitigation. Uh, the adversary who is trying to put his cell in the shoes of attacker and uh, try to uh, mimic the same, um, the same um, uh, tactics. The defender who will be uh, thinking about implementing mitigation, and finally, the security architect will be advising around the different best practices and the regulation that uh, the company uh, need to be um, compliant, compliant with. 
so let's deep into the dread modeling for cloud native application. I'll be going from containers, Kubernetes to the cloud, giving some example how we do that. So um, just I'm, I'm spotting here the thread, um, container thread from OWASP. So we have like a kind of thread that is coming from legacy world, other that are already related to specific uh, architecture uh, of, of containers. So let's first of all define a kind of data flow diagram. So we have developer who is like writing code, writing the container manifest, maybe a Docker file or other technology. Then he's pushing these to a repository. And from there, we have the bid and the push of the container image to um, a kind of container registry here. And the next step will be pulling into the, the container host, whatever is Kubernetes or not. And then we have different communication. Either the container has a privileged access to the OS and the kernel, or the container go to the Docker engine for some activities, and uh, finally go to the kernel. So this is the different, and we have also container to container communication. This is coming, for example, if you have the different package services that they can't communicate together, or maybe they don't, they don't have to communicate by there is a misconfiguration. So if we'd like to spot the thread vectors here, uh, first of all, it would be um, a vulnerable OS some container engine that someone can hook into. That's like the most common threads. Um, vulnerable application, this is like the same as legacy world. Um, exposed container engine, we are not protecting your socket on the container. Um, and secure image registry, when someone can push an image or alter or temper an image and do some malicious activities. And privileged containers that can access to the host. Um, plus misconfiguration, misconfigured container, and uh, also um, host escalation, plus finally having this unsupervised network between the different containers when I can hook from container A to B and extract, for example, one database um, password through the secret or something similar and be able to execute some lateral movement. So this is like the top seven or eight um, container thread vector. So I'm, I'm not listing everything here. Uh, but I'm, I'm giving like some examples of the most like popular ones. So the next step uh, will be um, to define um, the container thread, um, like the categorization of these threads. So you can see here that we are trying to, to put this together, for example, for the spoofing someone who is accessing on the source repository or um, someone who will be um, accessing on the container registry and trying to temper a container image. Um, also, for example, for the no repudiation, someone who is disabling the logs or modifying the log data for the naive service that can be on different layers, um, network or storage or so on. So the idea here that we start categorizing the threads that are um, um, in your context and the next step will be uh, to be able uh, to do a mitigation or assessment first and then mitigation for those threads. So this is something I will talk about later. Um, in, um, in the adversary emulation. Um, let's move now to uh, the Kubernetes thread modeling. So similar to the container, we have different layer of abstraction that coming with uh, Kubernetes by default. First of all, we have the cluster, then the node, and then the namespace, and we have the pod. So this is like a kind of different protection that it comes uh, by default with Kubernetes, but are not sufficient. So let's see how we can identify the attack surface of Kubernetes. So here I'm putting the different components that are part of Kubernetes, um, worker nodes, master work, control plane, uh, the registry. Um, I'm taking this example uh, from the CNC, a financial user group that I've been doing an exercise about uh, uh, Kubernetes thread modeling a few years ago. So it's so talkative. So here the idea that we start identifying the different boundaries First of all, uh, we have the machine segregation. We can see that we have three big compartments, the control plane, the worker host, and, um, and the image registry. Then uh, we start defining the different boundaries. Here you can see, for example, for the control plane, we are defining one boundary for each component, API server, scheduler, and controller. And we are also defining another boundary for the API server and the ETCD server because they are working together. Similar exercise uh, for the worker node when everything around kubelet and container administration should be defined or could be defined as a trusted boundary. Um, same for um, Cuba proxy, which is modifying the AP tables to make communication. And uh, finally, um, the pods. 
On the other side, we can define another trusted bounder for the image uh, repository uh, when this is uh, talking together, like getting the image and so on. So uh, let's say we have this um, different trust boundary. The next uh, step in the exercise will be defining uh, the data flow, how the data flow is going from one component to another. So let's assume that we would like to deploy one, one application, a sample application. So the user will be applying a deployment. So what will happen, there is a kind of apply or mutate deployment depending if the deployment exists or not. This is go to the controller, we send some data and we get some data. And then we have the scheduler. If the deployment doesn't exist in the cluster, the scheduler, we try to schedule the deployment. And we'll be talking to the kubelet, telling them, please pull me this pod, the kubelet will be talking to the Docker, uh, the container D, trying to double check if the image existing um, in the container, in the cache. If it's not the case, it will be pulled from the image repository. So we, got, we have this communication. And then what it will happen, um, it will send back the, the image to the container D to have the run C uh, running the container. And finally, we'll be defining um, the service um, endpoints. So we'll be pulling the service and the endpoint information, and uh, the key proxy will be defining um, the API type of communication to be able to redirect every request to this, this specific pod. So if you can see, this is like one simple example that is like, you can see it's a little bit complex. So from that, you can start spotting and identifying uh, the different um, different threads. So for the purpose of the presentation, I just like try, I just try to summarize everything here, like removing a lot of blocks. That's just so some common um, uh, threads or attack vectors that, uh, that, that are for the Kubernetes. First of all, you have this uh, access to the API server or ETCD. They are not protected by default in Kubernetes outside of the managed service, of, of course. Um, so the idea that, hey, the first threat here that someone can hook in my um, API server, can hook on my ETCD, make some configuration, deploy some new workloads. The second uh, thread, if you are deploying a dashboard, dashboard can be misconfigured and can be an entry point for altering some stuff on the, the, on the cluster. And uh, we have also the same as the container, if we have an access um, to the registry and we can uh, do some, some activity on that. So, it's, it's a malicious container that's coming from the registry. Um, we also have the same, which is an application that with a vulnerability, uh, such as Log4G, when someone can use this vulnerability to do a kind of remote code execution. So it's still um, valid in case of Kubernetes. And um, then we have the gain access to the secret when someone can just get the secret, for example, a connection to an external system or a database because we are not we're defining the secret inside Kubernetes. Um, and finally, uh, we have the Docker daemon misconfiguration when someone can hook into the Docker daemon from Kubernetes. So let's move now to the cloud thread modeling. Uh, using the same um, methodology, which is thread. you can see by default that we have these three uh, layers, which is the cloud account, the organization and the protection here. I'm, I'm talking in the case of Google. I'm taking an example of Google Cloud Search. I will try to define the different thread model that, that is coming with, with this service. So on the next slide here, what I'm doing, I'm putting the Google Cloud Storage, but I'm putting also all the next services that are working with. So uh, you can see that we need to define all this communication. You cannot take just the service, but all the communication to be able to see the big picture. So we see the big picture and um, um, we try to slice and dice and define each thread. So I'm taking just one example here, which is uh, an admin user who will be uh, trying to, uh, to access to one bucket. So the first thing, either he will go to the Google Cloud Console or maybe going uh, to the Cloud um, API and then we check uh, the organization policy. And depending on that, we give him access to the cloud service, storage service, and finally, um, access to the bucket. And of course, if I'm enabling uh, logging and monitoring, I will get one entry in my logs and one alert going to the event if there is an alert defined. So this is like a simple example, how it works for just one access. Um, but here, I'm putting another example 
which is um, putting everything together, like the different actors and the different communication. You see that it's become very, very complex. That's why it's, it's usually uh, an iterative exercise when you start from one scenario, one thread, and then adding another thread and try to mitigate. Um, so here, first of all, what I'll be doing, I'll be doing the different um, um, assets that I would like to protect. So I have a different user that accessing my storage. They have tokens. So I would like to uh, protect those tokens. I also have the content of the bucket. This is an asset that is valuable for me. And of course, I have the log data that may be valuable as well if that contains some high sensitive information. So these are the three assets that I would like to, um, to, do, uh, to, um, to protect. And here, I will be starting to find a different malicious user that can appear. So first of all, we can have like an internal attacker or an internal malicious user that he wanted to get some information for him or like for any other reason. So this is like one thread or like one thread actor that I have to spot. Um, also compromised internal user who someone just access to his laptop or his like workstation. Um, compromised external user uh, that is coming through external integration. External attack that gain access over internet due to some misconfiguration. Um, yeah, Google Cloud infrastructure agencies, it can happen. So we, I, can, I have to uh, spot that as well. And after this, after defining all the actors, I will try to see if there is any thread for each actor. So here I'm taking the example of someone who's trying to access a bucket through, um, through one of these, um, either he's an admin user, he's a storage user, or he's like coming from another DCP project. So here, you can see that the thread is, the potential thread is chef of credential or access token that can be used for malicious activity. And we, I'm defining like three, um, three, uh, three actors here. I'm defining the internal actor, the malicious user, internal malicious user, and the external attacker uh, over the internet. So this is like the three types. And then I'm, I'm trying to see how he can get to the asset. So here I can see that there are different path. And once this happened, the fact that um, if he's like a normal user, he can get access to read right to the, to the, um, to the asset and get some data. And, and if he's admin user, he can alter or modify the security uh, setting for the, the bucket. So, this is the impact, and here I'm doing my, 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 my category, so I'm, I'm telling that this is coming in this specific category. So the next step will be trying to mitigate this. So here I'm putting a kind of example just for the case of, 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 uh, of the demo, but yeah, you can define one or multiple uh, uh, mitigation for that. So let's go to the next step. So the first step is thread modeling. Here I'm defining my system. I'm spotting my, uh, my threats, and I'm trying to, uh, uh, to define uh, all the threats and define mitigation. But this is like a very time-wasting and very like penny exercise. So the idea here that uh, we need some, some, some tools or some, some adversary uh, methodology to be able uh, to run this uh, in, in an iterative way. So the most common uh, framework uh, for that is MITRE attack. It's a framework that defines a common language plus different adversary behavior uh, to, uh, to define the security posture of different layers of IT uh, infrastructure, uh, including cloud provider, uh, SaaS, and so on. So, and it's coming from uh, the MITRE organization, uh, which is a nonprofit organization. So here we define um, the MITRE um, matrix, which is defining Different tactics, you can see that the tactics goes from left to right. This is the, the, just from the initial access until gaining access into the system. So then we're defining the different techniques. So each tactics come with different techniques. So you can see that I have different techniques to have an initial access to the environment. And each techniques will be uh, defining one or more sub-techniques. And within the sub-techniques, uh, we get the procedure. This is the example how you can do it depending on the different thread actor defining, like the real ones. Then the mitigation, how can I mitigate this thread? And finally, uh, defining the detection. So I would like to detect, if this has happened for me, what should I do in order to be able to, to detect this kind of thread? So um, this is really useful to start doing adversary emulation. We have these for container. So we can see that on this view, 
We have all the different uh, techniques, techniques, uh, tactics, and tactics, techniques, and procedure for container. And similar, we have uh, one uh, made by Microsoft for, for Kubernetes. So the, it's, it's, it's concentrated around Kubernetes. You have the different, um, the different um, tactics, techniques, and procedure. Uh, we have also um, another one for cloud providers. So you can get these for uh, the top three cloud provider, AWS, um, Google, and Azure. And you can see the, the same way you will have the different procedure depending on each uh, cloud provider. Um, how the cloud attack emulation work for work? First of all, I have to choose one military attack technique. So I have to choose to test one by one like be atomic and elementary. And secondly, and then I would take the test one technique. Then I will execute this, uh, the procedure, get the result from, from the procedure, analyze the result, see if I have threat, real threat or not. And from there, I will implement mitigation and go to the next step. And, and you can see it's an iterative uh, process that's go over and over and over. It never stops because Behind the scene, your developer will develop new service, change the existing services, and changing the attack surface and the, the stuff behind. So you need to have this, this idea in mindset that this is an iterative workflow the same way you are doing like a continuous delivery or continuous deployment. Um, yeah, the last part of the presentation, I'll be talk uh, talking about different open source tooling that will help you uh, doing thread modeling and adversary emulation. Um, the first one is Atomic Red Team uh, from Red Canary. It's open source. They, open, they offer coverage uh, for um, cloud infrastructure, AWS, Azure, and GCP, besides Kubernetes and containers. And they have a library of tests uh, mapped to the Mitre Attack Framework that I, I showed previously. Um, so I'm putting here one example of, uh, of uh, procedure. Here you can see that uh, we are trying here to create a key, uh, a new access key in IWS IAM. Secondly, uh, I'm trying to uh, save this key uh, to a file called AWS secret .credential .creds. And then I'll be, I'll be trying to, uh, to extract the AWS uh, secret. So here you can see that we start thinking about automation, so we can, we can do this in an iterative way, an iterative way, and each time I have a new application or I have a new environment, I can apply the same paradigm. Um, um, a second example that I find really interesting for someone who just start uh, doing thread modeling, uh, this is from a company uh, called Redquart. And what is good, their example, they are quite simple, so they give you uh, like a very simple example, like here you can see that you have a Kubernetes manifest that you can deploy and you can like mimic the attack. So this is something really interesting for someone who be starting uh, learning uh, adversary emulation for, for Kubernetes. Um, Caldera. Caldera is a complementary tool uh, for Atomic Red Team. So they they offering this kind of automation around um, adversary uh, emulation. So uh, they have a built-in behavior mapped to attack imagery. So you can choose one of the scenario or multiple scenario. And you can run this uh, scenario in an automated way, gathering the logs and spot what, it, what is missing for your system. So this is really interesting when you want to, come to start automating the adversary emulation. Um, you have attack workbench. It's a kind of workbench when you start uh, documenting, uh, exploring, creating uh, your own um, knowledge base around what's happening in your environment. So, and it's uh, offer ex um, extension for any uh, for the military attack. So you can just building your own something that is uh, oriented and customized for the real um, for the real uh, purpose of your of your uh, environment and your enterprise or your company. Um, we have also the Matri Detect. This is not an official tool uh, from my team, so, but um, they give an interesting idea about uh, spotting the different, um, let's say, gaps in detection and coverage. So they can't, they, let me give you an example. 
they can tell you, for example, if you wanted to do a detection around Kubernetes, um, someone who alters something, a cluster law, create a cluster law inside Kubernetes or something similar, and you don't have Kubernetes law activated, they can spot you and tell you, hey, in order to be covering this part of your system, you need to have Kubernetes law activated. So it's ingesting and defining, prioritizing which kind of logs and ingesting you need to have, like outside of Siemens, including Siemens, sorry, and other tools. Um, AWS Thread Composer, quite interesting. So uh, you define your application uh, flow, you define your application metadata and assumption. You can even upload one diagram for the application. And then uh, this is will um, help AWS to list um, the threads and provide you the mitigation. So by the end, you will get something like this, which is uh, defining the different thread that you have on your system, if they are high, if they are medium, if they are low, and then you have the different category um, related to the stride frameworks here. Here you can see the different uh, categories. So it's really interesting because it offers a high level definition of thread that, uh, that is in your application. Um, Stratus Red Team, quite interesting. Um, they offer coverage for AWS, GCP, Azure, and Kubernetes. And here, what they, the, the idea that you have uh, like um, a list of, of, um, of procedures of attack uh, scenario that are ready to use. So only all what you have to do is just select one of those attacks, run again infrastructure, and by the end you get the list of the results depending on. Uh, on the, on the uh, yeah, depending on the configuration of your infrastructure or the configuration of your environment. So, and what is good, as I mentioned, they offer like for the three uh, major cloud, uh, cloud providers plus Kubernetes. Um, I'm listing here also a couple of offensive toolkits uh, regarding to the major three cloud provider. Uh, we have two tools from uh, Reno security, they are quite interesting. Uh, the first one is called uh, Paco, which is uh, an exploitation framework for AWS. And this is coming with another tool or another like um, application that you can use for learning, which is called Cloud Goat. And this is a vulnerable by design application uh, based on AWS. So this is the kind of the tool that you can use to start learning uh, about uh, adversary elimination. For Microsoft, we have two, two tools that you can use in Microburst and uh, PowerZoo. And uh, for Google, you have the Google Cloud Platform Security Control Mapping to Mitre Attack. So this is um, the, the, the most like, popular, I would say, tools or toolkits that you can use to start learning about. So what we can take back from this talk? First, um, security need to be automated especially in cloud area, era because um, you can't follow up, you have to follow up your, your DevOps team, your development team, so you start thinking about uh, doing the same way as infrastructure as a course, having policy as a code, and having a policy-driven uh, security. Um, another thing that you can uh, use um, the cloud-native uh, monitoring observability tool or logging tools to get all the ingestion and start building some detection around that, um, and um, just keep in mind that you, you need to be really agile when it comes to the policy because it changed from one environment and not from one day to another in cloud. And finally, as I mentioned earlier in this talk, uh, think uh, in graphs, not, not lists. Um, I put a couple of further reading here. That's quite interesting that you can take your time and read uh, when you are back home. I think that's all from you today. Um, thank you very much. Don't forget to rate the session. You have the QR code, and any question is welcome. Thank you. Any question? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes. So thank you for presentation. Very interesting. Uh, so it seems like uh, dealing with uh, cloud native application security is very challenging. And so I'm wondering if there is uh, enterprise level application to deal with this. Um, you mean for, for enterprise, right? Yes, enterprise level. Okay. 
Um, Gartner defined recently what we call it CNAP, Cloud Native uh, Application Posture Management, uh, that defined four blocks. Um, these main four blocks are CWPP, uh, which stands for Cloud Workload Protection Platform, so everything around um, the protecting uh, workloads such as containers and hosts. We have the, the CSPM, the second capability in CNAP, which is uh, Cloud Security Posture Management, everything around uh, cloud configuration and inventory. And the third building block is SIEM or KIM, which is standing for Cloud Entitlement Management, Infrastructure Entitlement Management, and this is everything around IAM access. So you need to make sure that the right person or the right service have the right access to the right service or the site asset at the, at the right time. So if someone coming just to do some debugging production, you give you one token that like take two or three, uh, three hours. And the final block, um, which is cloud detection and response, everything that is uh, trying to support um, any attack in real time, based on, on like system activities plus ingesting load from cloud provider, yeah. So there is like a bunch of vendors, but yeah. But if you wanted to do it on, with open source tools, um, you can do it, but you, need, you have, like, you have to, to do a lot of integration. But yeah, you have, for each, like, for each piece, you have an open source tool, uh, but yeah, you have to do a lot of integration. Hi. So um, now that I have done thread modeling, I have enumerated my threads. How do I go about ranking threads in kind of a risk-based way and communicate the oh, yeah. priorities? Very nice question. So um, yeah, uh, first of all, you need like to do like context-based, and um, let's say let's keep uh, let's let's take an example of vulnerability management. Um, let's say that you have a container that is running um, and you have 300 um, vulnerable. First step, you say how oh, from these 300, uh, which one are high and critical? So let's say from 300, we get 100, they are high and critical. The second step is saying which one are really um, running in production. So there is like some techniques to detect this. So you have like said, let's say from 100, you get 80 running in production. The third one, you say which one they have exploit, public exploit on the internet. So because if there is a public exploit, anyone can get the public exploit and try to, 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 to run the, the vulnerability. And fourth is having fix. So let's say that from like 80, uh, 40, they have public exploit, and 30, they have a fix. So for your developer team or DevOps team, infrastructure team, there is no excuse to go and fix it immediately because you know that this, this library or this um, Dependency, they have a fix. So this is like the kind of um, the kind of, uh, of prioritization for um, what's that? okay the, the kind of prioritization for um, for uh, vulnerability management on the cloud side. You need to think on the other side. For example, a bucket that is public, encrypted, uh, private, have access to internet and stuff like this. So it's a little bit different from from the cloud configuration. Thank you very much. Thank you all. You can join me on Cystic booth later if you have any question, or if you want to see a demo or stuff like this. I'll be uh, today, tomorrow, and on Thursday on Cystic booth. Yeah, please come and uh, have a great uh, discussion. Thank you very much.